Welcome along to another video and this time I'm going to demonstrate how I use IC Capture software with the Hawkeye mod of the Wolverine scanner uh, to scan frame by frame cinefilm. The camera on board the scanner is a DFM72BUCO2-ML from Imaging Source and I think that cost me around about £80. Uh, and the lens, I can't remember what the lens is, I think that was about another £30. And this will capture frame by frame in PNG, JPEG or TIFF. And I normally capture in JPEG. So the first thing I need to do is set the scanner up. And for that I'm just going to brush my gate clean. And we've got a little bit of standard oak cine film here to go on the scanner. Which we'll just lace up. Just advance it a couple of frames so we know that it's lined up ready for focusing and from this point then we can switch to IC capture software when you start it up it remembers the settings that you used last time so the first thing I'm going to do in the device window is reset the properties of the device and the first thing I need to do then is go to the device properties and start making some changes. And we'll start with the partial scan because you can see at the moment I'm capturing up here in this window RGB 32 1120 by 868 and that's my window there and I need to obviously frame the cine film so that I'm not getting this that sprocket and no picture. So I turn off auto center some people like to see the sprocket holes. I generally don't because I think it upsets the, the auto exposure. So I think I'm happy with that. Let's just take, a, take it up to there. The next thing I'm going to set is my exposure. And I like to work with auto exposure. And we see here that the gain is set to auto. The first thing I'm going to do is turn the gain off. But I do want my sharpness here underneath again turned up full. For the gamma settings I like to work somewhere between 60 and 100, it depends on what the image is. I tend to run this manually and not automatically. I like to set the white balance automatically and then I turn it off. That way I keep an even white balance throughout the reel of film. I prefer to make the changes to the colour balance in DaVinci Resolve because the film can go blue or red or different colours during the scan and that could upset the white balance and you see the white balance hunting um, and that makes it much more difficult in post to get the white balance and the colour right so I tend to tend to use white balance to auto to set it uh, and then switch that off. This auto reference over here on the right I'm just going to turn, bring that down to about 70, 70 or 80 something like that. Once I've got my partial scan done, I'm going to head over to the dynamic range and turn this to enable. And then I will just adjust the intensity of that a little bit. I'm going to go and check my color settings. That's on 64. I'm just going to crank that up a little bit to 70. In my exposure, I'm going to leave all these settings. And I think I'm probably just about happy with that. The next thing I need to do is go to my memory card and I capture my film to memory card. And the reason I do that is because I've got an SSD drive on this laptop and a typical 50 foot reel will be about 3600 stills. And if I'm doing a large job that's an awful lot of stills to write to the SSD and then delete. So I prefer to capture to a memory card and that also then gives me the ability to move that around really quickly. So what I need to do next now is set up the sequence timer and where I'm going to save my images to. So the first thing I'll do is click on settings, go to file name and we'll pick up that folder that I've just made on the card. I'm going to reset my index so we start with zero. I'm going to apply that and we can see now it's going to save the film, save the images into D new folder. 
The next thing I need to do is activate my external trigger. And this is going to ask me if I want to leave the automations um, or disable the automations. Well, I want some of the automated stuff that I've set, so I'm going to leave that. I'm now ready to start the scanner. First thing I will do here is click on the start timer. And we can see that nothing's happening yet. But as I start the scanner, Fifty feet of film takes around an hour to scan at one frame a second, which is painfully slow. But because it's automated, more or less, um, you can pretty much leave it to do its own thing. And we're going to see a splice go through in a second. Once the splice has gone through, we're back where we should be. And in DaVinci Resolve, I will just take out those six frames so you don't even see the splice. And because the Wolverine take-up is such a monster, you'll see here that I'm not using it. In fact, I've disconnected my take-up motor completely. It just, it's useless. It pulls much too hard on the film. So you can see here my very elegant, clean plastic tub. But I just let the film come straight out of the gate and drop into the tub. And I've done this with 400 foot reels with absolutely no problem. And then I'm gonna use my hand wound movie viewer gently wind it back onto the reel once the scan is finished. So it's a proper Heath Robinson affair, but it works for me. One frame a second is fine for a 50 foot reel, but if you're doing 400 feet, that takes eight hours. That's gonna test your patience. I mean, of course, you can stop the scan without any problem whatsoever. screen capture. I can stop the scanner and I can walk away now for as long as I want to. And then I can just pick up and carry on where I left off. And already we can see there 426 frames. As I say a full 50 foot reel I think is about 3,600 frames. At standard 8 reel is probably near of 4,000 frames for a full reel. And we can just see the bottom edge of the frame clipping in here at the top, so during scan I can simply make a change to my Y offset and move the picture about. Occasionally I'll come back and I'll change this auto reference level here and I'll change the gamma. That gamma is probably a little bit high on 105. see up here in the RGB box I'm scanning an 1120 by 868 so I'm going to get 720p resolution out of this um, but in DaVinci Resolve I can probably push that to 1440 by 1080 and if we come back to the scanning we can see that that cine film is curling up nicely in the bottom of the tub and there's the end of the film We stop the scanner, we stop the timer, we take it out of live view and exit. Once we've got that scan done, we could just pop it into Virtual Dub. Virtual Dub is great for image sequences. And if we come and find that new folder, there's our first frame and there's our scan. I'm just going to make that slightly bigger so we can see it. And let's play through that. This will be playing at its default speed of 10 frames per second. So the first thing we'll do is change the frame rate. And as this is standard 8 frames film, I'm going to put that at 16. I could edit out those individual frames where the, uh, where the splice went through. So I can pull that point there 
and choose my left marker in down here. And then we can use the arrow key just to go through the splice, hit the right marker and do a control X to cut that. So it's very easy to edit in uh, virtual dub, but we'll head over to DaVinci Resolve. And the first thing we'll do in DaVinci Resolve down here on the gear wheel on the right is set our preferences. And we want a custom resolution. And as I say, I'm going to go 1440 by 1080. And I want this at 16 frames per second. And we need to set those at the beginning. We'll then come over to our media pool here on the left hand side. And there's our image sequence. 00, 00 to 0798. And we'll pull that down into the media pool. Head straight over to the edit tab and pull that image sequence into our timeline. I'm just going to use my arrow keys and get rid of this splice that we saw go through the gate. There it is. I'm going to put a cut in there and come back to there. Put a cut in there and lose those frames. There's another splice there. So let's get rid of that splice as well. And we'll take this little section into the color tab and we can see here the blue floor down in the right hand corner here. Zero represents black, 1023 represents white. I can see my blue is way too high off the floor and so is the red. So using my offset here over on the left hand side, I'm gonna pull that blue floor down. I'm gonna pull that red floor down. And I'm gonna pull that green down. We can see the green is higher than the blue and the red so we could even those out a little bit. And I'll do that using the gain. And by taking the green down, it's going to increase the others. We'll take that blue up a bit, just bring the blue floor down. That looks better. I've got a slight clipping at the bottom here, so let's do something with that. Let's just zoom in very slightly. I don't want to lose too much of the image. That's better. Obviously, we could spend hours and hours and hours doing this. I just want to show you the process and how we use IC Capture. We're now going to export this, we'll call it test. Uh, we'll stick it out on the desktop and we'll do it in QuickTime on H264. It's going to end up at YouTube, so I don't need to do network optimization. But if I was playing it on my home network or it was going to a destination where network optimization doesn't get applied automatically, I'd check that. In DaVinci Resolve, well, uh, this is 1440 by 1080, but I certainly don't want to quality is best because the bitrate is just going to be ridiculous. I know that if I restrict this to 8000, that's going to look alright. I'm then here going to click on Add to Render Queue and click Render All. I'm going to exit to Vinci Resolve and hit no Fill. I suppose the next thing in the process would be to put this into film 9 to try and get rid of some of that grain. So let's just bang this into film 9. We'll start a new project. We'll call it Fire. Smell. I'm not even drinking. Uh, we'll save it on the desktop. We want it to stay at 1440 by 1080. We want it as a dot movie. I'm going to set this at 10 megabits per second because the exported file was at 8. I can't choose 8 as a preset here, so I need to go just above it rather than below it. I could get away with 5 megabits per second, but let's do 10. We'll right click on this clip and delete this from our last project. And we'll come in and we'll add our test.movie, which will open Virtual Dub again for us. And then in Film 9, I'm going to turn on Cleaning and I'm going to give it a single action. And in Degrain, I'm going to give it 100% single action. And then we'll send that off for processing and we'll start the render. Virtual Dub will open and write an uncompressed version of that. Once it's written that uncompressed version, it will then start doing the processing. And Film 9 is done, process complete. So we can get rid of Film 9. So we'll open that with VLC player and we'll open the original with VLC player. The test VO on the left is the version we've just done in Virtual Dub and the version that you can see on the right was the scan that we exported from DaVinci Resolve. And you can see how all the dirt up in the top of that corner where the skyline was has gone from the cleaning. I mean film 9 is just 
the best program in the world. Um, so that's the process from putting a reel of film on the scanner, using IC capture, and then either virtual dub or DaVinci Resolve to do your editing and your colouring and putting your um, subtitles or captions over it. Export that, pop it into Film 9, job done. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. I see we're over 800 subscribers now. See you next time.